Good afternoon, respected judges. My name is Nitin Kothar. I am here to give you a presentation on food and beverage service. So before I start, let me introduce you to myself and to yourself as well. Uh, I have done my other management from Banasadas Chandiwala Institute in the year 2011, which is affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh University. Mm -hmm. I worked with ITC Fortune Select Excalibur as a guest service associate for one year. Then I moved to Fitness Course India Private Limited as a customer service officer and then continued over the year for a period of three and a half years. And then currently I'm working with Coincept Hospitality Private Limited as a club general manager, food and beverage service and sales and marketing. So shall I start with the presentation? Yeah, yeah, please show. So considering you all as a class or student, yeah. and this as a foundation class for FNB service. So before I start, I just want you to understand what do you understand by FNB service or food and beverage service? For me, uh, anything, anything. I am not marking you, or this yeah. is not a test, uh, anything which comes. Beverage always things considered whenever we go to the rest, go to a restaurant, obviously. Uh, when, whenever we are ordering something, there, are, there is a team which deals with that uh, one part, and there's another team who works with this. So, I think food and beverage is a separate team. Absolutely. As it, it is a combination of three yes. words food, beverage, and service. Mm -hmm. So, first, I will start with food. Anything which is tangible or uh, which uh, is nutritious or which we eat plant or animal substance is called as food. Mm -hmm. Same with beverage as well. Anything which is alcoholic, it can be or it can be non-alcoholic as well. Service, it can be a feature, it can be a gesture which we do it with a food and beverage. So suppose it can be a good service as well, it can be a bad service as well. It depends how we basically present that food to a customer. That is very important. So this is where I, we have to study about food and beverage service. One is production, one is service. So the food has been produced, the beverage has been produced. Now we have to serve that to a customer. So very important that how we are serving it, the gestures, the smile, the way, the technicalities and everything. So that we will discuss today. Today's topic is the different outlets which we have in FNB service, termed as food and beverage service. So first, we'll start with banquets. Before that, any questions, uh, any doubts uh, regarding food and beverage service? I think you must tell us first, then we will be clearing our doubts. Sure. So, in banquets, before I start with that, uh, what do you understand by different outlets of food and beverage service? Any idea? Anything which comes into your mind? Uh, different types of outlets, which are like a point of sale, different point of sale. For example, a theme restaurant or a speciality restaurant, coffee shop, banquet hall, uh, conference rooms, and everything. Absolutely correct. Anything uh, from you? I'm Any idea sure. about uh, anything about FNB outlets? Uh, See, um, I don't know much about it, but then uh, I just go to a restaurant and I eat it all. Okay, so restaurant is one of the outlets. Yes. You got it right. Okay, so before we move, move on to restaurants, let me explain you about banquets first. Banquet is again an essential part of uh, FNB service. One of the main uh, key earner, or uh, I would say, banquet words refers to bank, which is basically uh, one of the again large quantity earner for hotels as well. So, what do you understand by banquets? What is in your mind if anybody says banquets? For me, as a layman, banquet is something I go over there, enjoy a party. A, a or large something. area which, uh, which can accommodate uh, large number of people can be used for larger parties, like weddings. You know. Absolutely. Food service for uh, like uh, uh, facilities like food, beverages, and buffet. Those. Correct. It can be used for uh, any kind of function. It's a gathering basically in banquet. It's a pre book gathering that we arrange over there. And uh, we book in advance either through telephone or either in person as well over there. There is a particular team which takes care of that. There are different kinds of banquet setup, menus, and everything available for the same. So that we will discuss later on. Initially, I'll explain you what is exactly banquet is. Banquet is an outlet of a hotel where a gathering takes place. It can be a marriage, it can be a birthday party, it can be a conference, it can be any kind of uh, show launch, it can be uh, basically reception as well. So how we basically do that? Any idea? Uh, it's like a person has to book first for the, for the space where they may want to conduct a conference or anything like any wedding function or something. So first thing, uh, what 
would be required if you wanted to book a banquet. Number of pax, uh, number yeah, of persons. Of pack, what type of menu, what type of meal they require, uh, timing and everything. Right? Absolutely right. The reason I have asked this uh, because the difference between restaurant and banquet is it is in a big quantity. Yeah. If it is a gathering of more than 50 people, 100 people, that's where we need to book banquet. And that's why there is a separate outlet called Banquet in Hotels as well. There are restaurants, people can book that as well, but you can't arrange a big function like marriage uh, or a kind of big conference like that. So it is a pre-book catered event. The guest has to previously decide on a banquet venue. And then uh, with the hotel premises, uh, he decide the menu, prices and everything. Booking is done through telephone. A function prospectus is drawn up by the department and the entire function is organized as per the host request. So this is which host decides that what kind of menu I want, uh, what kind of setup I want, what all options you have, what kind of service, uh, decor and everything has been decided by the host over here. As compared to restaurants, we can't change that setup. So this is the advantage uh, people have in banquets. Similarly, menu choice to be given in advance to the hotel staff or hotel banquet kitchen so that they can prepare accordingly that as well. It's not that uh, you came in a restaurant and you choose from the menu. It is we decide the menu that we will go with this much of starters and everything. We decide on the menu but although there are options available from the hotel side, different menus available but this is the customized menu that a customer demands from hotel. So that's the advantage you have in banquets as compared to restaurants. So anything in banquets, any doubts? No. So, we proceed. Very, very so this again uh, continuing on banquets, uh, booking will be noted in the banquet reservation diary, can be subjected to amendments as well. Guests may participate in the function only by invitation from the host who is responsible for putting the entire bill. It can be informal, formal and conference meeting. As I told you, banquet can be booked for a formal meeting, it can be booked for a wedding anniversary, it can be booked for a reception, anything. So the setup can be done accordingly as per the host as well. So this is uh, the picture of one of the banquet setup. Moving on, next outlet is coffee shop. We all understand uh, by the word coffee. So what is the difference between a coffee shop and a restaurant? Any idea? Coffee shop is more specific. You get uh, I mean, all kinds of coffees in a coffee shop. But in a restaurant, it's not necessarily that you will get all all that all, all those kind of coffee that you're getting in a coffee shop. And the stuff is like it's more of a place where you won't be getting a proper lunch or dinner kind of things. You would be having more snack kind of things. That's what uh, every individual understands yes. about coffee shop. You are correct at your point of view, even. Myself, till the time I don't know about that, I also think that coffee shop is a place where we go have coffee and just have some fun. The major difference between a coffee shop and a restaurant is coffee shop is 24 by 7. And it is a multi-cuisine restaurant. You can order any any food, any kind of cuisine over there. Mm -hmm. What are available over there. And restaurant is not 24 by 7. It is specific to lunch and dinner only. This also have a coffee shop, also have an advantage, you can put this as a buffet in the breakfast as well. So the major difference is it's 24 by 7 available all the time and you can just uh, order at any point of time as compared to restaurant where they have fixed timings for a lunch and dinner as per their buffet and as per their apartment. So this is the major difference. So, I have a question about sure, this. So can we have double your menu in coffee shop? Uh, Generally, the difference between table de hot and a la carte, it's not there table de hot in coffee shop. A la carte is where we have varieties of options available and we can choose from them. Table de hot is a fixed menu. We can't choose between them. So, generally you'll find table de hot menu in a in more like specialty restaurants. Fixed, Absolutely, uh, specialty yes. restaurants or a fixed yes, uh, restaurant. Right. In mm -hmm. coffee shop, you would not uh, have table de hot menu. Anything uh, related to coffee shop comes into your mind? Any doubts? I hope now you can better uh, explain this coffee yes. shop. Someone yes. asked you about coffee shop and a restaurant. So this is the detailed uh, elaboration about coffee shop. 
It's an establishment which primarily serves coffee, other hot beverages, along with various cuisines of food products as well. It shares some of the features of a bar and restaurant as well, but it is built differently from cafeteria and restaurant. Coffee shop focus on providing coffee and tea as well as light snacks, buffet and other versatile menu as well. It works 24 by 7. This is something, the uniqueness of coffee shops. Mm -hmm. So till now we have covered uh, two outlets. Can you tell me what the outlets? Banquets and the coffee shop. Perfect. So we are on the right page. So moving on now, the third outlet is room service. Again, same question. What do you understand by room service? This is again something uh, very common and I'm sure you must have traveled to different hotels and you must have experienced different room service. Uh, room service, uh, is this only a part of uh, F&B service or it can no, be? it can be part of housekeeping as well. Yeah. Other words you can put this as in-room dining. Mm -hmm. Nowadays uh, in the hotel industry people use room service as IRD which is in-room dining. Mm -hmm. So, I would be specific only to IRD. Mm -hmm. So let's move on on this. So what do you understand by IRD? I think IRD. In room dining or the room service that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it is uh, the in room dining would be more expensive than the one which would be. Uh, I mean, if it is a fixed menu that is there in your uh, packet or something, that would be uh, that would cost you less. And if you are ordering something here uh, from the a la carte menu, it will be it will cost you. Separately and more. No, it's not like that. Okay. There is again uh, people charge uh, service charge uh, and if you like order something in rooms, but uh, that service charge is also there applicable in restaurants as well because mm -hmm. over there someone is serving you that food as well, so that is applicable. Well, that has happened. Well. Again, uh, that might not be if you go to a five star hotel. Uh, I'm talking about a five star hotel. Uh, they have charged you extra for uh, in-room service dining. There is a service charge which is applicable uh, in in-room dining, which is also applicable in restaurants as well. Okay. So the menu price remains same. So what I'm trying to say, uh, maybe I'm not putting in it right here or whatever it is. See, the, the, in every package when you, when you go to a five-star hotel or somewhere, there's a package that you take, right? right? So you have, if you say you take a package where lunch is there, Absolutely. Now, yeah, I got your yes. point. So and the breakfast is also good. But breakfast. then, if you're going to the restaurant having the breakfast, that is one thing. And if you're ordering it in your room, absolutely. it's a separate then, over and above thing. Absolutely. absolutely. Because about. breakfast, that breakfast is a buffet breakfast. Mm -hmm. Buffet breakfast means you're not choosing from the menu. Yes, that's what you I'm are saying. Just, that's uh, a fixed menu. Absolutely. Kind of thing. That's similar for everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. That is including your room package. Yes. But this is something you are off ordering something extra or you are asking for something uh, uh, extra from the hotel side apart from your package right. so then they will charge you but for a normal even, even on that you can, if, if you are uh, if you have an option of a buffet you cannot actually order something from the buffet to your room the same absolutely you buffet you have to go and uh, take it in the restaurant or in the coffee shop only. so that's the catch in the buffet that's why a buffet is always included in the mm -hmm. package yes. and that's again the marketing <laughs> You make yeah, that on yes, yes, yes. So, room service is again a outlet of FNB service. Very important outlet. All the outlets are important, but this is very important because here we are serving the food in the room. So we need to make sure that the same service standards, same hygiene, and everything has been maintained while serving the food to a customer in the room. As well. He needs comfort because that's the reason he has ordered the food in the room is not willing to go outside the room, maybe X, Y, Z reason, is lazy, is not well, anything. So it is the duty of FNB staff to make sure that the food has been delivered on time and with basically proper uh, service standards. So room service is a service of items of food and beverages to the guest room by a waiter. Room service is the type of service which is provided by all hotels. You might find there are hotels which don't have banquets but room service will always be there in any hotel the guest may place an order over the telephone which is noted by room service order taker and later serve it to the guest room there is one kot which has been made at the time of ordering for room service that kot has to be presented to the kitchen ird kitchen and then they basically deliver the same food to the waiter 
So what do you understand by KOT? I have just It's a kitchen order ticket. Perfect. It's a kitchen order ticket which we need to raise to make sure that order has been placed over there. Then the kitchen staff works on that and then we got the food. Room service is also known as IRD, which is in-room dining. You can note this point, this is important. Room service boy will present the food and beverage to the guest. The guest will sign the room service bill and the first copy for the room service and the second copy is sent to the reception. So while checking out, the reception people will count that amount in your bill and then accordingly you sign out. Room service boy will take the TOT and will proceed to the kitchen for the food which I already discussed and to the bar for beverage if in case there is any beverage order. There is a separate section for beverage and food. Room service will be operating round the clock. Again, important point to note, it is 24 hours. So suppose you need a food at 2 a.m. in the morning or 3 a.m. in the morning. So if you don't want it to go to a coffee shop, you can bring the same food at your room as well. So this is again uh, advantage you have in room service. The service is either done by using a trolley or by using a room service tray. So there are two ways a waiter can basically uh, deliver the food to a guest room. One is their room service tray and one they have basically their trolley. So you can have a look of the pictures of both trolley and tray as well. So if the order is big, he has to deliver in a trolley or it is for packs of 3 or 4 or 5. If the order is for a single person and it can be arranged in a tray, so the waiter delivered it in a tray as well. So there are two ways one can deliver <coughs> food over there. There is a proper setup of IRD trolley as well that uh, we will discuss uh, in the next part. Today we will be discussing about the different outlets, so I will not discuss uh, that trolley part. Otherwise there is a proper setup how we do set up what amenities we do need, uh, what other things we need to take care while going to a guest room with a room service trolley and tray. Sure. Moving on next outlet. Uh, before that, any doubts, any any anything related to room service? No. Next outlet is specialty restaurant. So what is the difference between a restaurant and a specialty restaurant? Why we count as a specialty restaurant? It could be on a particular uh, meal or menu, like a, okay. it's a, like a Indian restaurant speciality, Chinese or Japanese, different cuisine. So this is the major difference. Again, Moving on, if you see the difference you will find in a normal restaurant, especially a restaurant, is the decor, the theme, the service, uh, pictures and everything of a restaurant. Uh, I think you have a question. No, I don't. Sorry, I thought we asked yes. something. No. So that's the major difference you will find in a specialty restaurant. That also again changes the way of service and everything in terms of uh, speaking to a guest and everything. So they have expectation related to that kind of specialty. For example, like uh, Oriental cuisine. So people will expect uh, different kinds of cuisine from uh, Japan, Thailand, and all that stuff. So that's where, again, specialty restaurants need to maintain that uh, service standards as compared to a normal restaurant where you don't have any expectations related to a particular style. Mm -hmm. So this is a big difference between a restaurant and a specialty restaurant. Again, an important outlet. Nowadays, a lot of hotels are coming with a specialty restaurant, specifically Chinese and a uh, lot of uh, sports related uh, as well restaurants, so that people come and enjoy their time over here. A lot of people, food is always tasty. A lot of people need another reasons to come to that place. It can be decor, it can be service, it can be ambience, it can be anything which attracts them to come down on a regular basis. So that's where specialty restaurants is different from a normal restaurant. Entire atmosphere and decor are geared to a particular type of food or theme. Restaurants offer Chinese, Japanese, Indian cuisine would be termed as specialty restaurant. Those restaurants which serve a spe special kind and special cuisine food, only the appearance of restaurant will be matching to that cuisine. So this is the set setup of a specialty restaurant. This is how it looks like. Another setup of a specialty restaurant. So you can see that ambience, that yes. lights, and everything. This is a table setting uh, which can be used uh, 
different outlets of FNB. It can be banquet, it can be restaurant, it can be coffee shop, it can be a specialty restaurant as well. So if you see, uh, there are different uh, things kept over here. Pork on the right side, uh, then knife on the left hand side. So this again depends, there are different kinds of service patterns, different kinds of table setup, different kinds of menus, everything. So we'll discuss if that. I ask you one thing. Sure. You are working with a company called, uh, uh, um, what is the name of the company? Coincide Hospitality. Yeah, Coincide Hospitality Private Limited. So is this, uh, you are uh, dealing with um, food and beverage services. So and is this a restaurant kind of thing? A club where there's a restaurant which you are there is no outlet as such. Okay. We have a spa section, we have a beautiful saloon, we have an entire reception, we have a entire offices at the back end of all the directors and all the staff. So there is a food and beverage requirement for the guests as well as the, it's a club. So people come over there, there is a cafeteria as well. So I need to make sure that service standards, food hygiene standards, everything has been maintained. So anyone can order anything from the, uh, if somebody there the spa can order food? If you want the, the items which we have over there, like uh, it's a common cafeteria we have, we have mm -hmm. all health related items like salads and sandwiches and all that stuff. On top of that, if you wanted to order some kind of food from outside, that is a call, that is my personal call on an exception. We can arrange someone to go outside and bring it uh, for the guest mm -hmm. just as an exception only. Otherwise, we try to avoid that because then the staff would get busy in yes, yes. that part only. What are your responsibilities uh, exactly there, apart from you know getting it arranged to food and all? My major responsibility is uh, FNB service is part of that, housekeeping is also part of that, managing the entire club, starting from uh, reception to saloon to spy and everything. So I'm the club general manager, so I need to make sure about the briefings, team briefings, hirings, uh, any kind of complaints regarding customer related to anything related to trainers, related to front decks, related to their membership, anything. Then I need to make sure that uh, certain standards over the calls has been maintained by the sales staff, mm -hmm. marketing team, need to coordinate with the marketing team that uh, what is the progress and what are the plans for the next month, how we are coping up with the next target and everything. So major responsibilities is uh, managing the front decks, FNB service and housekeeping at the club. Why do you want to turn into now uh, I would say that uh, I'm not moving and transforming. Although my job remains same, it's the same hospitality field. Uh -huh. I'm also training the staff over there. Okay. Okay. Difference would be over here it would be a group. Over okay. there it's individuals and uh, mm -hmm. one or two people and training them, motivating them on daily basis <laughs> with uh, different setups. Then also training them with the company's policies and make sure that they adhere that and continue with the right uh, way we wanted to them. At the same time, I train the sales staff as well, how to make a call, how to basically deal a customer in terms of showing the club, showing the saloon, then so how to close the sale. Uh, is the key to, if you have to train uh, certain people, like students are there, uh, who are basically trying to Start learning about whatever you're going to teach. First of all, it need to be that any any kind of uh, basically session. It need to be interactive. Mm -hmm. Then only I can get to know where I am lacking or where they are lacking. Mm -hmm. Interaction at the same time, uh, regular assignments, uh, regular monitoring of for different individuals. I can create different groups and find out one on every individual has their own strength. So find out that what strength he have, what weakness he have, so I can compare or I can pair up with that guy so that both can help each other and make sure that uh, we are helping each other and I am helping them as well in growing. So important thing in basically training or I would say teaching is that uh, you make sure that uh, whatever you are teaching, they are observing it, they are understanding it majorly, the key words and then they can actually basically uh, perform in terms of their exams and everything. Okay, then fair enough, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and